Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Well, what we're going to do today, I'm going to get my stamps and molds back out again and we're going to make a really cute farmhouse DIY. So let me show you what you'll need in case you want to make this project. I'm going to be taking this tin um, container here that I picked up at Target's dollar spot last year for five dollars, okay? So you just need some kind of container and then I'm going to be using um, my stamps and my molds. And then I think I'm going to be using the Waverly Chalk Paint in Cashew. I think it'll be really pretty. And then I'm going to be using some ink that is called uh, turmeric. It's a really pretty color. Okay. And I'll show you more on that in a minute. You'll need some really light sandpaper naturally your molds and your stamps um, i'm going back to use this brush again i absolutely love this brush and i'm going to be using my tight bond glue and some cornstarch for my molds and that and then some air dry clay that is simple so let me get everything turned down and we'll get started with this hopefully adorable diy Okay, I have my container like this, and I switch to this angle. I think you can see better. I'm just going to take my Waverly chalk paint in the cashew, okay? And I'm going to pour some of this in this cup. You could use any color that you wanted. I'm not gonna pour a whole lot. Okay, like I said, I put in about that much paint and I'm going to just take some baking soda to give it a little bit of a texture and I'm just I'm just going to sprinkle some in until I get the desired texture and just stir it that's what we're getting right now I think I might put a little more paint in because I don't think that will probably be enough to paint this container with and I'm out of bowls or I would have put it in a bowl like I did before so you can see I'm going to add a little bit more baking soda I think it's really supposed to be like a cup of paint to I don't know like a fourth a cup or half a cup of baking soda I don't really remember it off the top of my head I had it in my other video but it's just whatever to get the consistency that you like. This looks pretty grainy. I might add just a little bit more. You can use sand um, to change the texture of your paint. You can even put dirt in it. You can do so much. Or you can rub dirt on your finished project. Okay. So that's what we have right now. Okay, so I'm just going to clean this off on my brush. Put that right there. And I'm just going to start putting this right on here. I thought this collar would just look really, give it like an old, old feel. And I love this brush because I don't think you use nearly as much paint with it. And that's what we're getting so far. I might have to put more than one coat on this. We'll see. Probably will. But I want to get this first coat. And before I painted this, I lightly sanded my uh, galvanized little container here.
and I'm just going to smooth this side out. My brush strokes. And then I'm going to get this lip. I'm going to paint inside this down a little ways that way I don't know what I'm going to put in it yet you could put greenery you could put anything you wanted I'm not sure so I'm gonna paint down a ways so it will look nice Okay, now I'm going to put my brush into a baggie so it won't dry out until I can dry this with a hair dryer and then I'll come back and put some more coats. On. Okay, this is what we're getting so far. It's just one rough coat on there and I need to do another one because it's, it's not complete but I'll have to wait for a minute um, because I want to do something, all right? All right, now what I'm going to do is I have my IOD molds. This one is Trimmings 2 and my air dry clay from IOD. And, and this is what this looks like. It has a bunch of different trimmings around it, okay? Now, what I always do, you don't have to do this, but I always apply a little bit of cornstarch in my molds and it doesn't take a lot. Let's see, I know which one I'm gonna use and it helps it release but like I said you don't have to put a lot just kind of like you're baking a cake and you want to kind of flour that just like that I'm gonna get rid of the excess I really don't have a lot of excess okay now I'm going to get my air dry clay and when you're not using it, definitely put it back into a container because it will dry out. It has a lot of moisture in it. Just work it a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to put this back in here. This might be enough. Now, I'm just going to roll this out. Put it in the middle and just start squishing it towards the ends. You want it as flat in the back as you can because you're going to put it on something and you don't want to have any um, you want to get a nice adhesion and let it be flat and I'm going to paint mine while it's wet you can let it dry if you want you will have some cracking like I said before although I haven't had a lot of cracking you can get clay on Amazon as well. I'm going to get some. I just, I need to make an Amazon order. I just haven't done it yet. Then I'm just taking my hand and coming right along down through here. Gives you such a smooth edge like this. I really do like these molds. And then you can save this clay that you've torn off. Helps you get a really clean edge. Put this back in here, flip it over. Okay, and then that's what we have. Then I'm just going to start basically doing it like this. 
it comes right out and that is what we have I think that's so pretty okay now I want to put this right along through here okay so just like that and I'm going to continue with that but I have to glue this down first okay so I'm going to take my tight bond you can use your finger popsicle stick or a brush to apply this totally up to you want to get good adhesion so get out to your edges good okay just going to pick this up put it right here and press down you don't want to ruin your design but you want to get it adhered. Make sure it's coming in contact all along. And that's what we're getting so far. I think that's so cute. And try to get it even. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing and make another mold. If you want, you can take a spatula, a putty knife, and just kind of come over um, and make it nice and level if you want. But you can see how these molds really lend themselves to perfect casting each time. right there make sure you press and this is what we're getting so far okay And you just continue.
all right i just have one little section to fill in which is no problem i will just take a little piece of clay and put it probably right in here Tear it right in there, and I'll put a little bit of glue. And there you go. Okay. Now I'm going to clean my mold with just some water. Okay, like I said, I'm going to paint mine while it is still wet. You can't even tell where I pieced that together so simple it gives such a beautiful look okay now to paint over this i want a very delicate brush so i think i'm going to take this little brush right here very delicate now go on here now the only thing about it is just remember the more texture that you put on this it could hide some of your um, designs, but I don't think this is going to affect this too much at all. Okay, just kind of brush down gently because this clay is still wet. So you want to use a really soft brush. So far I've painted everything wet and it hasn't given me any problems. And I'm still on that same amount, small amount of paint that I mixed up. You could paint this a different color if you wanted. Possibilities are endless. Okay, now I'm going back to my bigger brush. Still haven't gotten any new paint on here. I mean, still haven't mixed up any new paint. And come right along through here. I'm going to go over these handles again. Okay, and we'll take a hair dryer to it and I'll be back. Okay, this is what we're getting so far. I really do love that. You could stop right here if you wanted to, but I don't want to, okay? So now what I'm going to do is get my um, IOD stamps, the same ones I used the other day when I did the pig right here on the, uh, like a cutting board that I made. I'm going to get the cow. Now you, I just didn't show this the other time, but you have to condition your stamps with some light sandpaper. You just 
lightly scuff the back of it going two directions, okay? And I have their ink. This one is turmeric. And I think it'll be really pretty once it um, dries. This is the color that you have. I think that is going to be really pretty up against that, all right? So I'm going to take this and put this down so I don't get anything on my counter. Now, um, you can cut these off of their little um, containers, the plastic containers, and use that to apply it. I don't want to. I really prefer doing it this way, and I don't have any problems doing that. You could also get a block if you wanted. Okay, and I've applied this to their pad, and I think that it is enough. I don't want this real super soupy, and I'm just going to lift up. And get our little cow. You could do anything you wanted. Now I'm just going to lay this down, and it's not going to be on the design that I just did. All right, going to pick this up and kind of hover and then you apply it and then you just gently press with this hand and you keep the other one down because you don't want it to shift or smear or anything like that, all right? So we're just going to go over the little cow I think I smeared that one a little, okay. And then we're gonna lift it. Look at that, isn't that pretty? You could do any color that you wanted. You could do a pretty black, but I think this is adorable. I think it just looks old, okay? So I'm liking that. Now I could go ahead and put one on the back and I think I might just do that. You could use the black, like I said, if you wanted. Really doesn't matter what color ink you do. I just wanted something that looked old and faded, and I thought this would be really a pretty look for us. So I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna flip this. Sort of hover where I want it. Commit and keep your hand still. Rub all of the areas. And then raise it. <laughs> Look at that. That is so cute. It just looks old. I love it, okay? So now I'm going to just take, store this upside down and get me a wet one and wipe this stamp because I don't want anything to dry on it until I can wash it. And you don't use hot water on the stamps. All right, I'm gonna go finish washing this with a soft toothbrush and I'll be back. Okay, now what I want to do is take a little bit of this turmeric that I stamped on there and put in my plate. It's not going to take a lot because this is so pigmented. Okay, and right here, sorry, I was out of frame. I just added some water. I think I really added too much water. And I'm just going to come down through here like this. I think it's really got too much water and not enough ink. You could do paint this way if you wanted. Now remember, you can't get it too soupy because your cow is still a little damp. So probably I think what I should have done is just put a little bit of water on my brush. Let's see and do this. I like this effect better. You wouldn't have to do anything if you didn't want to.
I'm basically just staying on the ink and forgetting the water. My brush is just a little damp. And I'm just gonna go ahead and come right over that cow. Let's look at this. Do the same thing on the inside so it matches. Like I said, you wouldn't have to do this. It almost looks a little rusty to me like this. And I like that. But it's entirely up to you with what you do. I wouldn't suggest mixing this with water though. Okay, I like this. Okay, let's take a look. Well, here this is. I just put this plant in here. You could put anything. You could put blankets, but I love that ribbing around the top. I, on, after looking at this, I wish I had picked a different color to put that cow stamp on with because it really doesn't show up that much. I think black or brown would have been really pretty. But here it is from this side. But I love that rope detail going all around like this. I mean, your imagination is your only limitation when you're dealing with this stuff. I love it. Now this is still a little wet, uh, the paint. So I'm going to let you see how it looks setting probably on my uh, server, I don't know. And, uh, but I'll have to put something under it because I don't want to ruin my server. But this is such a way to upscale that tin container that cost me $5. It looks like it would cost you so much more. And I'll let you see that cow up close. Like I said, in person, it's a little bit darker, but not much. It just looks very faded and weathered. But like I said, I think I would have preferred a darker collar, but I think it's really pretty anyway. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out on YouTube. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe and become a member of our family. And if you subscribe, hit that notification bell and set it to all so you won't miss an upload. So I will see you tomorrow, Wednesday, for a Dollar Tree haul. I found so many wonderful finds. So let me go get Maggie and let her say hi to you, and then we'll see how this looks on my server. Well, here is the baby. <laughs> Were you just barking? Shay, I was just barking at something terribly outside. <laughs> we bought her a little... Um, tennis ball, but it was elongated, and I thought she'd have so much fun with it. She had that for three minutes, and she put a hole in it, and we had to take it away from her. So I's a big chewer. Say, hi, say hello, say I love you. Yes? Uh-huh. <laughs> so let's go ahead and see how this looks on my server. Well, here it is on my server. Like I said, I put something underneath it because it is wet, but you can see the cow does stand out. It's just not as vibrant, but that was really what I was going for. But I think a black would have probably been a really good idea to do. And I love that detail around the top. I just think it is so unusual and gives a lovely look to that tin uh, container totally upscaled it a lot and gave it a farmhouse flair. So until next time, bye guys.